Do you ever feel like you're alone? At school, at work, at home, in your mind. I walk these steel city streets, searching for direction, forgetting there are so many one ways I am faced with oncoming traffic. I run for safety, but I'm not sure where safety lives, and I don't know who to trust anymore to stop and ask for direction. Sometimes violence follows me. It follows me down my street, it's at my bus stop, it's in my classroom, on my basketball team, at the parties, in my home, in my room, it's on my body and in my mind. These polluted thoughts make it hard to breathe, so I close my eyes hoping it will all just go away. I wish I could erase the things I've seen, but I can't. So I escape the pain by attaching myself to anything that will help me get away. I tried to distract the fear that lives inside me. But last week, last week was the last time I will let you get to me. The fear that was dormant inside me for so long has now burst into flames. So don't mess with me because I've been sharpening my knuckles on jaded memories since time. I now pack weapons on my body to feel safe again. And I've got nothing to lose because I live for today. The only people I trust are those who have my back. My family lives in these streets and we're living large. That fear no longer lives inside of me, but instead lives inside you, of me. Only now do people notice me as I walk, listen to what I say, or are concerned for what I do. I feel the presence of your judgment and opinions, but you don't realize a violent past leads you down a violent path of violent thoughts that breed a violent act. Where were you then? When I was searching for someone, something, nowhere. They say we are all a product of our environment. They say it takes a village to raise a child. So, you made me this way. People ruled it as a suicide. Other people said it was, he did it to himself. Some people said that, you know, like there was an accident. But nobody really knows what 
who did what. If he would have had, you know, a minute to, to be listened to, because I think that's something that police officers forget to do to 14 year olds. Like, like we don't have a voice, like we're just freaking out for no reason. But no, like, because I know that that happened to me too a lot when I was 14. And it's like, no, you know, if you just, if you just calm that child down and talk to them for a minute, then maybe you'd hear what they're trying to say and start taking what they're saying seriously because there's a lot of, you know, I think there was a lot of neglect in that situation as to hear what he was saying. And because of it, we all had to visit him, you know, a week later in the funeral home. Just like, yo, how can you do that to another kid? They just lost that person too. You know, like you don't know the connection that person had with them. You don't know how that person feels looking at that body. It's just another form of torment, another bullying. Like there's so much actual violence in this world, but, but we don't look at we, we look at the large aspects, we don't look at the small aspects that are happening in our own communities, you know? And that right there, my friend passing away, it could have been avoided in so many ways. I think that's what the message of this documentary is, you know, that we need to kind of do the same sort of thing and put out a better message because we've lived through our life here we gained a lot of money here a lot of negative a lot of positive a lot of violence a lot of guns a lot of drinking this park represents my past simply because I spent majority of my time here that's one thing I learned man everything happens for a reason everything happens for a reason you know what I mean see I could have been in jail right now I could have been dead right now I could have been broke right now I'm not either one of them. Back when I was growing up, it, it, no one cared about us. Nobody cared, you know what I'm saying? Like, the cops, all they did was arrest us for nothing. So, you have youth that have criminal records that can't even get jobs. So, we're going back to the streets. That's how youth is growing up. Why do you think all the violence is going on? People's priorities is messed up, B. It's like, I hate the fact that human beings get worse as they grow older like how is that even like as you get older you're supposed to get better intellectually spiritually physically financially everything has to get better if if i can touch a youth out there and you want to get a message out of this create your own legacy whatever you want to create you can create it now, I don't want to make it sound easy. It's going to be a lot of problems. It doesn't matter how much things life throw at me because life 
is the only thing that's gonna literally put you through hell. You know what I mean? Like, life is a, so much things, man. Like, life is hard, but it's worth it. I'm telling you, man, there's not a lot of role models. There's not a lot of entrepreneurs here showing the youth where to go, how to do it, where to spend their money, how to work, how to how to become entrepreneurs. You know what I mean? But man, you got to think about all the positive things in your life. So create your own future. You are the person who you set your mind to. You know what I mean? Uh, be involved in a positive environment, become the person you want to be because if you don't believe in you, no one's gonna believe in you. If you don't love you, no one's gonna love you. Self-love is the most important thing in life. You gotta love yourself before anybody loves you. You gotta respect yourself before anybody respects you. And that's one thing I learned from the streets. The streets are gonna teach you negativity and positivity. You're gonna take all that stuff in and you gotta filter it. Look man, time and management is the most important thing. My name is Giovanni Sounds and I go by the name of G.O. And I represent ITP and the Youth Center and I'm doing this documentary from the heart. I encourage the youth to become a better person, to, to change the world. And I promise you, you can do whatever you set your mind to. Work hard and never give up. And if you do give up, get back up. Don't just give up and stop. Give up and try again. Try again. Keep going. Keep going. Shout out to Rudy. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And then I just... This is the area that I actually ran away from because uh, of youth violence. I was actually in, uh, I was getting into fights and I didn't really know how to fight so I got sent to jail and picked up by a police officer and then it scared me. I didn't know why I was in jail. I, this is the violence, the cycle that I ended up in for like years here in Hamilton when I first moved here. So, I mean, that's just a part of my story. Well, I don't know if you can see, but we're in Sir John A. McDonald, downtown Hamilton. And um, pretty much, this is where like life started for me, you know? I didn't believe in myself in this high school, man. And I don't want to blame the high school, like, oh, it's the building's fault, or it's the teacher. Yeah, I, I will take responsibility for my actions, but I also feel like if I was in a better surrounding, of people, I think I would have been more motivated. I didn't care, man, straight up. I didn't care about nothing. I didn't care about my future. I didn't care about my past. All I cared about was just me living. I just told you my, my story of being in high school, but it's all in your mind, you know what I mean? Whoever controls your mind, controls your life. Young people want to kill each other off. You know, why do you want to kill each other off? Don't you have enough problems in society? Like, come on, you got the old folks, you know, they're judging you. You got the police constantly harassing you. 
You got school teachers that aren't teaching you properly. They're just passing you on to the next grade. So by the time you, you graduate, you can't even read or write. So why do you want to kill off your own young people? You got the police to do that. Hey, you got the, the school education to kill off your brains because they're not teaching you properly. You got your own parents putting your ass out in the street when you're 15 years old. Did you not make no damn mistakes? Are you perfect? Huh? I'll tell you something, I'm 60 years old, I'm a grandma. But I don't like dealing with people my own age because they're a sorry piece of you know what. But you see the young folks, I respect the young folks, I love the young folks because I remember what it's like to be young.